In this video, we're going to look at loops, a for loop in particular. In Thunkable, the loop said repeat five times or repeat two times. That was a, a loop in Thunkable. And in Python and every other language, we don't say repeat five times or repeat two times. We have what's called a for loop. So let's do that in Python. Okay, so we're, the square, if you'll notice, I repeated this line of code one, two, three, and if I put a fourth one here, I can make it even more. So I'll just have George turn right one more time. So I had, I had George do this same command four different times, and that's a waste of your typing. That's a waste of space. It makes this thing look too bulky. It makes you look like a more hardcore coder because you have more lines of code. But if somebody were to look at this, they would say that it's just way too inefficient. So we have what's called a loop, a for loop. There are two different uses for the for loop. For this one, it's going to be a repeating loop. So the way we do that in Python, now be careful, make sure you're watching all of this and listening too. So we say for, and then we choose some variable here. Most of the time in a for loop, the variable we use is the letter i. No real reason. That's just, it's i for iteration. Iteration means to do the same thing over and over again. So for i in range. Now we didn't have to say i, you could have said for this, for each, for x, for whatever you want. But the convention is that, for the most part, we use the letter i. So now in, in the parentheses here, we're going to say, well, how many times do we want to repeat this? Well, I had the same two lines of code repeated four different times. So I'm going to say, do it four times. So this part says, for i in range 4 means, do everything that's below this, do it four different times. OK, here's some really picky syntax for Python. You've got to do this, otherwise you're going to get an error. First of all, at the end of a for loop, we need a colon. So that's the two dots. That means, all right, we're, we're ready now to start. Anything below this must be in the loop. OK, so what I'm going to do is get rid of these three down here that were the same thing over and over. And now here's the next picky thing with Python. Python must, you must indent. So what this is saying is, go change the fill color to black, begin the fill. Now here this is saying start the loop. This starts the loop, and this is what we're going to do four times. Now, because this George.end fill is outside, it's, in other words, it's up against this left side, it's not going to be repeated as well. So when everything's up against the left-hand side, those are their own thing. So the fill color is its own thing. Begin fill is its own thing. The for loop is its own thing. And then end the fill is its own thing. It's this stuff that's indented is what's being done inside of the for loop. This is something that Python is very, very picky about. And it's one of the few languages that require this of you, but it's required. So let's, let's run it and see. There's your square and it filled it. Great. Did exactly the same thing with much fewer lines of code. Now let's do that again, but with a rectangle. Just because I want to just, you know, make sure you're kind of getting it. So we're going to make a rectangle and we'll fill it in. All right, so with a rectangle, we don't have as much repeating, but still let's, let's choose a much nicer fill color. Let's color, fill it with pink. Why not? Let's have George begin the fill. And now we're going to create a loop. Now a rectangle has two sides the same, not four sides the same. So I'm going to say four and you can use any letter you want. I'm going to say for i in range. And this time we're only going to repeat it twice because there are two sides that are the same and not all four. And notice what I when I started this loop, I hit the colon. And when I hit enter, it indented automatically for me. So now you don't have to think about it. 
Because I put the colon there, when I hit return, it indented. So you don't even have to worry. So I'm going to say, tell George, oh my goodness, to go forward. Let's do the short side first. So let's just go 30. And then I'm going to have George turn right. Um, I'm going to have him turn right 90 degrees. And then I'm going to have George. I should have used a different name than George. I'm going to have him go forward again. This is the long side now. And then I'm going to have him turn right. And there I go, spelling George wrong once again. Now, what I need to do is get out of this loop. So I need to hit the backspace that gets me up against the left. Because I'm done. This drew the rectangle. Now I need to end the fill. Okay, let's run it. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. Before we do this, I'll, I'll run it and I'll show you what I just remembered. So there's the square, but then it drew the rectangle right on top of it. I forgot to show you something kind of cool. So what we can do is move the turtle over to a different part of the screen. To do that, I'm going to ask George to pick his pen up so that when he moves, he doesn't like drag the pen along with him. And I'm going to say, I want George to go to a specific spot on the screen. And I'm just going to say, um, oh, I don't know. Let's do negative 10 or let's do negative 50 comma negative 50. And then if you don't put the pen back down, you're never going to see Okay, now let's try that and see what happens. There's the square, he moved over, and that's what negative 50, negative 50 does. He moved him over to the left. Okay, so that's how you can put two things side by side. No notice that one side is skinnier, that's just a weird thing with Replit. It's not something that always happens with Turtle. It's just something that seems to be happening on Turtle, on this canvas in Turtle. Okay, that's it.